The final step in my 1920s outfit was constructing the lingerie. I looked and looked on Pinterest and museum websites for weeks trying to figure out what style of lingerie I wanted to recreate. Eventually, I decided on a two-piece set consisting of a bra and tap pants. I patterned the set as closely as I could to the original pictures. Since my dress and slip are fairly transparent, I thought it would be best to use an opaque fabric for this part. I used a premium off-white cotton muslin that I had left over from another project. Okay, so I have everything cut out. This is going to be the bra. The straps are going to attach here and then the middle is going to be gathered. Um, and those are the little side pieces. Those are the pant legs. They're going to be gathered up at the top. And this is the little belt for the front. So now I just have to get to connecting everything and put on the insertion lace, which is this. I didn't have enough fabric to cut the bra in one piece as it was in the original. So I cut it in three pieces with a little triangle at each edge to make it the right size. To connect these little triangles to the main part of the bra, I French seamed them together with quarter inch seams. French seams are done by sewing the fabric wrong sides together, ironing the seams open, and then sewing another seam some distance away from the first with the fabric right sides together. This technique encases the raw edges with a very neat finish and was commonly used in the 1920s. The next step in the process was to pin and sew the lace on the top edge of the bra. I attached it using a straight stitch on the sewing machine and very carefully guided the needle along the edge of the lace so that the thread would almost disappear into its weave. Next I marked the darts, but decided it would be easiest to finish the raw edge beneath the lace before sewing them so that I could work with fabric that would still lay flat. To finish this edge, I folded it under twice and felling stitched it down. Careful only to catch two or three threads with each stitch to minimize visibility from the front. After securing the raw edge, I pinned and sewed the darts. I recommend pinning darts vertically instead of horizontally. I find it decreases the risk of the fabric shifting around while going through the sewing machine. Okay, so I've got the darts um, sewn and pressed now, and I just pinned the hem on the bottom edge. From the picture, it seemed like the hem was sewn after the darts, so that's what I did. Um, and then after that I'm almost done, I just have to attach the straps on and then also the ties that will go on the back so that I can tie closed. I finished the bottom with a rolled hem sewn on the machine as the original was, with a simple straight stitch. Okay, so I've got the bottom hem sewn now. It's not perfect, there are some little flaws, but it doesn't really matter that much and I don't feel like I'm picking it. So. I'm moving on to the straps. I just got this ribbon that's like almost the same color as the um, fabric that I'm using. Um, so what I did is I just folded the ribbon under twice at the bottom and then kind of um, just pinned it on in a slight angle so it's actually aligned with this line, not this straight line. So that when this middle part is gathered down, it will sit straight hopefully. So I'm going to sew those on the front and then after I have them on the front I'll see where they need to line up in the back and also how long to cut them. Okay so a couple details about the bra. I attached the straps. Wow come on dude focus. I attached the straps with a felling stitch and then I back stitched across the top and then for the bottom of the straps I just felled on this extra seam allowance right here. So I French seamed these two pieces together and um, whip stitched the strap to the seam allowance to get some extra strength. And then I also back stitched along the top going along with the angle of the lace. For the back ties, I did the exact same thing. So I just fell stitched on this edge of the lace right here and then um, back stitched along the edge. 
And then for this extra bit of lace, I just decided to turn it in in case for some reason I ever need to lengthen it again. Um, I don't know why I need to. This is, offers plenty of adjustment, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, this right here is just done as little cartridge pleats. Um, and I really like the way it looks. It looks very neat this way. So I made sure to space the stitches very evenly. And I did two rows and then just tied a knot on the inside. I wish it would focus. On the inside and then I pressed everything so it sits nicely. I think that is pretty much it for the bra. So we'll be moving on now to the tap pants. I don't know if we, I've shown the finished product of the bra yet, but she's pretty cute. Obviously, we'll do a nice final reveal for her, but she's looking amazing. First thing, now this is taking a lot of trial and error to figure out. These are two squares. They are hemmed on the short sides. First, I am going to sew them right sides together on the short sides. But I have to stop where I need there to be a gap for the leg holes to close. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, to get everything to fit well, this opening is six inches, which will be the front of the shorts, and the back opening is three inches. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with that after we're done sewing those up. Alrighty, so I've got the sides sewn now. There's still the slits. So what I'm going to do is take my other little rectangle here that is 12 inches by 4 inches and just insert it like so into the slits. So what I do, let me adjust this first. Okay, now I have the seams in the middle. So what I do is lay this, this slit out as if it's a flat seam, put this on top and so along there and then I do the same thing with the back and that's how it's done so let's do that so it's been a while since I filmed um because my phone ran out of storage and I didn't feel like going through all my pictures um I finally done that <laughs> so here's what happened um I ended up sewing this little extra piece in to give the legs more room I sewed this seam at four inches, the front one, and the back seam at two inches. Um, I feel like that gives a good amount of space. Then what I did is figured out how far down I needed to roll the waistband. So I just folded it over twice. It's about a half an inch um, rolled down twice in the back and then in the front it comes to about an inch. So after I figured that out, I made a line where I was gonna sew the panel right here on the front. So it's sewn right sides together but flipped up. And then it's sewn right along the line where I was going to fold the waistband downwards. And then I folded it over and ironed it so that the seam is actually slightly hidden in the back. And you can't really see it from the front. Next, I'm somehow going to stitch this down. I might do it by hand or by machine. If I do it by machine, I'll have to flip this up again and stitch it by machine first. And then sew this down with just a top stitch. Um, then I just have to hem the bottom and insert the drawstring in the um, waistband and I'll just unpick a little bit of this right here so that it's open for the drawstring. This is the inside of the pants and I flipped the um, panel on the front up so that this is the outside and I can stitch along the inside of the waistband hem edge um, without this getting in the way. Then I'm going to top stitch this part down. I've got the waistband area sewn and I threaded the ribbon through the waistband with the plastic embroidery needle. And now, since I have this flappy front panel, I'm just going to top stitch this down. Um, I made sure that the ribbon is straight so that this secures it because I don't want it gathering up the front, just the back area. Um, so I'm going to make sure to pin those ribbons into place before I sew the um, front panel down uh, and then after inserting the insertion list on the edge I should be done. Okay I've got the front panel laying flat and pinned so I'm just gonna begin the tedious and very terrifying process of edge stitching this um, because I want it to look all pretty so hopefully I get it in one shot.
want to go so over some of the last details that I didn't film. Um, so the last thing I did on the shorts was obviously finish the edge with the felling stitch the same exact way I did the top of the bra. Um, so obviously they match. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the shorts. Um, I threaded this through. It's actually worked out very nicely. I made sure that a sti the stitch going through the front of the um, panel held the ribbon in place. So the ribbon actually goes all the way around the pants to make sure it doesn't come um, up apart or pull out of the threads or fray in any place. Um, but these actually fit really nicely. I'm very happy with the way these turned out. I am really proud of the way this recreation turned out. Naturally, using cotton instead of silk chiffon causes the garments to drape differently over the body, since cotton is much stiffer and heavier than chiffon. That being said, the overall construction and fit is remarkably similar when compared to the original, which came from painstaking study of the images of the reference material, as well as diligent patterning. Now we move over to the dress. This is the finished product. All I did was use the extra pieces of chiffon. I made a sash, so this is literally a very long rectangle. Luckily, thankfully, it was cut on the salvage edge, so I just hemmed one edge, um, one long edge and the short edges, and it works great as a sash, very complimenting of the colors. And then I had sort of a wider piece that I made into a headband, so this is two pieces. So um, these are two big rectangles of approximately the same size um, and then I sewed them together in the middle, folded the seam allowance over, and then I ran a ribbon, the same ribbon that I used for the straps on the chemise, um, through both sides and pulled it to gather however much I want to at whatever moment I use it. So, um, the last little thing that I did when I was trying this on, I realized it would be very helpful if I added another row of gathering. So I have a gathering right along the seam right here, but I found that the shoulder seam actually didn't fall straight, it kind of fell forward. So I added another gathering seam about three inches um, apart from the bottom, and then it goes in like a triangle like this, and that actually makes the armhole sit evenly, um, which makes it fit a lot better. So I am done and I will be wearing this to a friend's birthday party tonight and then do a final reveal on my birthday. So I think that pretty much wraps this video up. Thank you all for watching.